All right, so we're on day number, I don't know. It's been so hot out here, plus the fact that we've been rained on almost every single day over here in Fraser, Michigan, where we're building a huge koi pond. Originally, the homeowner came to me and wanted to do um, a walleye pond. Well, if you do a little research, walleye will need 12 feet in depth. The city are just the city here is just not going to allow that. So, let me show you what we've got done so far on this pond at four feet deep. So I'll turn the camera around. I'll show you what we've got so far. All right. So we've got a pond that's this big by this big. I know that is four foot depth. We've got our signature series 1000 skimmer. We're going to do a 9PL, which is approximately 7,500 gallons of water per, per hour. We're going to do our biofalls up in there, twist, turn, come down. We've got our first drop, or our last drop, that's going to drop into the pond right here. Below that, we've got a shelf so we don't get that deep plunge of water. I know I repeat myself over and over. This long trench right in here, that is our fish cave. If you can't see it, that just means we've done our job. Brian and Javaris are rocking in this sidewall here. That is the deepest depth right here. So this is going to be the destination area where the fish will come up and greet the owner. Now he was talking about doing a gazebo back in this area. I think it'd be so much nicer. Let, it, let me know what you think. To do a gazebo in this area with the edge of the gazebo right at the edge of the pond. That way when you're sitting inside the gazebo, you'll feel like you're right on top of that pond. And it's, I think that's a cool, um, I think it'll be a cool look. Plus, this will be the nice view right in through here. So if you have a gazebo on this side, you're looking at the waterfalls coming down instead of pushing the gazebo way in the back. Now we didn't have to move as many trees as originally thought. We only pulled one arborvitae out of the way. This weeping spruce here is going to be nice anchoring the stream there. We'll do a retaining wall, as I mentioned earlier, uh, around the base of that one. We've got a weeping white pine here. Now, as much as I like those weeping down either into the pond, into the stream, they can get kind of messy once they do a needle drop. So why add more nutrients to a pond by having uh, needles inside the pond? Yes, the skimmer will pick it up, but a little bit more maintenance if you ask me so I think it's a nice anchoring plant back there evergreen maybe do some low-lying plantings in the front this is gonna look really killer once this thing's all planted up now he does have a fence guy that's coming in and he'll be doing a wrought iron fence a 40 by 50 maybe 40 by 55 coming uh, 14 feet off those arborvitaes on this side coming down here with a nice gate and then coming this way. So any lawn in through this area will probably be mixed out and they'll have stepping stone paths, maybe some gravel paths that uh, he can walk around and enjoy uh, his garden. Be very interesting to see what this looks like in a year and a half, two years, uh, once everything starts growing and settling in. So what do you think of our progress so far? Um, it's coming along. We've got two more days on this site. Our goal today, we've got another 45 minutes. Our goal today is, or before lunchtime, is to get this rocked in here. We'll get the skimmer attached, and then we'll finish rocking in our pond. Goal for the end of today is to have all the pond all rocked in. We'll remove our rock pad from the bottom and then uh, gravel up the bottom, gravel up the shelves, and then start having the real fun rocking in that stream. We've got today and tomorrow. Give me a thumbs up if you think we're gonna be able to finish this by today or tomorrow. Hey, I got one, I got three, thumbs, four thumbs up from the crew, so um, I have all faith in them. We're, uh, we're short a guy. I'll let you figure out who's not with us anymore. You got yours truly coming out of retirement, and I've been lifting rocks just as much as these guys have. Right?
Who's got the beefies? <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, uh, you know, pitch in where I need to. So I'm not out on the road. I'll do evening appointments uh, when I need to. Saturday appointments, I've got a couple of them. But we're busy, we're healthy, we're having fun, and we're making people's dreams come true. So it's time to make some magic and get things done. So we're here in, uh, not Fraser. no, we're here in Roseville, Michigan, and we're on the final day doing the last 10%. And our theory is the last 10% is the first 10% that our clients will see, so we want to make sure we get all those details worked out. I turn the camera around, I'll show you what's going on. So Zach, not the new guy, is hooking up the overflow. And on this particular project, the homeowner actually has a drain over here that we're going to run the overflow right into his existing drain. Typically, we'll come five feet away from the pond and discharge it there. The purpose of an overflow is if you've experienced uh, a lot of heavy rains, your pond can overflow. We don't want the water to go down and underneath the liner, creating any bubbles. These may look like big rocks, but hydrostatic pressure underneath a liner will do a lot of damage. If it comes up from the bottom, it pulls down from the sides, and then you've got low edges, you've got leaks. So our pond is filling up with water right now. It'll take most of that day, it'll take most of the today to actually fill up with water. So we probably will not be able to run it today. Uh, we might do some final details on Monday. Working on the stream up in here, watching Brian fall on his ass. Um, wow, that was close. He saved himself. Uh, working on the final details of the stream up here, getting all that buttoned up. Javaris is the new guy, oh, laughing at Brian, so falling. Not oh, funny. Buddy. On the other side of this Rose of Sharon, we've got Tony the electrician doing his job. So we ran a trench. Uh, Tony ended up putting in some galvanized pipe. That trench is eight inches deep per code. He's already been inspected by the uh, city. He's putting in a uh, four gang outlet, one for the pump, one for the transformer. Now, if the homeowner wants to put another transformer in or wants to put in a dosing system for his pond or Christmas lights on any of these trees, he'll have the power and he'll be able to run all those. So enough talking. We got to make some magic. We got to get this thing buttoned up and on to the next job. So we just got warnings on our phones that a severe thunderstorm is on its way. Look at those clouds. Woo -wee! It is gonna rain. It's gonna rain. But you know what? It feels really good right now because we know that rain is on its way and it just cooled it off probably about 10 degrees. It went from 
89 degrees to 72 degrees that quickly. Uh, we know the rain is on its way and you know what? I think uh, we're all looking forward to it. All right, Javaris. All right. Zach King down below, rinsing things down. Zach King is our new AKA fish guy. No longer the new guy. That's Javaris. And he'll lose that title as soon as another one comes on board. So this one is all finished up. Water's clearing up really nice. We've got our signature series skimmer here with a 9 PL pump running three inch piping up to the top of our Aquascape's signature series 2500 uh, biological filter. Twist turns comes down into the stream. I really like how those uh, natural boulders are set fractured boulders get a lot, a lot more action out of them I love how this berm is just tapered to fit right into the landscape it's approximately three foot high off the existing grade we did some plantings today water dirtied up just a little bit but it's relatively clear for for just starting this thing up in a, a couple days ago got some creeping Jenny right in through here here and there's another one tucked in right over here. The purpose of that is just to soften the rock work. We're gonna be adding some fish in a couple days. Got some paper whites right in through here. Nice aquatic plant. Some society garlic right over here. This is chameleon plant right in through here. That'll take off and grow. I really love plants in a stream because what they do is they filter the water. They'll catch a lot of the nutrients because 100% of that water goes through this stream at least once an hour, a little bit more than once an hour. And those plants really help filter, in it, filter the pond. They compete with the same, uh, or they comp compete for the same nutrients that algae goes after. We've got some water lettuce right in through here and here. Excellent filtration plant. Obviously, we got our bio balls in here. Right down here, though, this is a tropical here in Michigan. Um, that's elephant ears or taro. So that'll that'll actually grow up probably about through this high. Each leaf will be about a foot and a half, two feet wide, and you never have to water it. But look at the depth on this pond got a nice fish cave down in here so he'll be able to house a lot of fish in this pond don't want to overdo it he's actually thinking of taking his uh, above ground swimming pool down because why have two when you can just wade in here and cool off and relax and you don't have to test the water you don't have to use any chlorine you got the best of both worlds here. Let us know what you think how this project came out. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan with Puts Ponds and Gardens, and we appreciate you watching our channel. Make it a great day.